Hello and welcome to Concrete Mom Scrap More with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today we're going to bring you another installment of our Dresden case study. We're going to do minis, Dresdens, by English Paper Piecing. That's right, EPP. We are going to do, go into this for just a bit, but the pattern you're going to find in the show notes below, as well as our Facebook group link. Uh, when we're filming this, our next virtual sew date is October 22nd, but we don't know when this particular film drops, but join the Facebook group. You get to vote on which day you need your virtual sew date, and it's lots of fun. But first, I also want to talk to you about a fellow Canadian and fellow Albertan. She is Terry Rowland, and her YouTube channel is also going to be in the show notes below. She does a lot of colorful, wonderful, fun stuff. So go check her out and tell her Brenda sent you. Okay, so let's get into the sewing. Okay, so you've printed off your pattern. This is the original I drew, and you can see all the little white out mistakes that you know I was trying to eliminate. So what I've done is I've kind of went through and I've paper pieced a bunch of stuff. You know, English paper pieced a bunch of stuff at the same time. Now, I, English paper piecing is really simple, right? But here, what we've done is I printed this copy, or like, well, I printed myself a copy, and then I ironed two sheets of freezer paper together. And what that does is it creates a really lovely little cardboard stock that you can have handy. So. Once you do that, I glue on the, just with Elmer's school glue, I glue this on to my fabric, right? So now I'm going to take a bigger needle because obviously you can't, you won't be able to see the needle I would use. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna start at the top and I finger press that down quite a ways. Now I've got some black thread here on a big needle, so hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. And then I just pull over that other side. So I want to get that finger pressed or massaged in place before I start. Now I'm going to make one stitch. Don't go through, don't go through the paper, but just make one stitch. Now I've got a little knot at the end. And I'm going to make a second stitch just to hold it in place. That's it. And now I'm going to feed down, because I don't want a great big loose hunk of thread to get caught up on all the way to the bottom oh I hope this thread is long enough <laughs> so now what I do is I've got this nice and finger pressed we're just basting all we're doing is basting our stitches or our piece now I'm going to make another two stitches you can make them in an X or whatever you know like basically you want to catch both pieces and now you this is such a short little bit that you don't even have to slide across you want to make two little stitches again and I do this when I'm doing hexes like I'll do a bunch of this kind of thing right on right in front of the TV because I mean you just it doesn't take much time to baste a bunch of thread based a bunch of hexes now some people glue based and you can glue baste if you'd like. That's your choice. It's um, not my choice. I always have some thread hanging around here that needs to get used up. And I just take two stitches right here. And of course, I'm almost out of thread. So it's not working out the way I need to. And I just go like this. And I get a pair of scissors. Now if I was thread basting I, I use whatever thread I have kicking around right I don't get fussy over what kind of thread or anything and in this demonstration too I'm going to be showing you how to to do this with uh, orophil thread which is a good thread normally I would use an 80 weight and a number nine straw needle but we have tried and tried and tried to get those camera shots and I'm just making a little granny knot that, you know, a shoe, something that you would use on your shoelaces, right? So just to clip that out of the way, get this, there we go. Now this is my, here I'll flip this over. This is my basted piece, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to carefully line this up, this basted piece up 
to this side, right? Now you can see that this doesn't quite match, but it will come together. It will come together and lay flat, right? But right now it's because of, you know, it's just the way it is. It wants to be that way. So I've taken, um, oh, I know what I was supposed to do. I'm not supposed to do this. I'm supposed to show you guys how I make my quilters knots. And I'm just going to just offset these. So I'm only going to use one string. Now this needle is way too big for what I would do. But I mean, for demonstration purposes, you have to see what I'm doing. So I wrap it around oh, a few times, you know, just like that. And you can see all the thread is built up right close to my thumb now, right there on the spool. So now I pinch it with the other fingers and I pull all of that through and I just keep pulling, pulling, pulling and I have a knot. Very simple, very, very quick. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick up your ring or your partial ring and I just, what I did is I just sewed one on, on at a time because I was doing this over a couple of days watching TV now I go straight into the corner. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. And I do three stitches right in the corner. This is kind of odd working with such a big needle <laughs> doing this. But, and you just do three right in the corner. One, two, three. And what that does, and what you're trying to do is only pick up the cloth. You're not picking up the freezer paper inside, right? So you're just doing this. And I picked up a little freezer paper. There we go. And you can feel it with your needle. If your needle's really sharp, you might puncture the freezer paper. But basically you want to pick up a couple of threads on each side. And this goes along fairly quick. Now you don't have to go crazy and go for the 21 stitches an inch or anything. This is more of a... I always like to think of English paper piecing as more meditative, right, than anything else. Okay. Oops. And every once in a while, your piece will get caught, catch up your thread, so you just pull it through. Now, you can use thread conditioner and that, that helps not tangle. Um, like I say, I use normally, if I'm doing English paper piecing and I'm doing something really good, I'll use a 9 or 10 needle and a, a 80 weight or 100 weight. That I find that works best for me. And I'm just going to quickly zip along. So, how is your day going? I mean, my day, day here has been... Our cat was sick and he's on the mend, so that was... He's older. I know some people aren't cat people, but he's an older cat and he's a lot of fun. Sometimes he's difficult, but, but uh, yeah, of course, now that I want to hurry, it's not going to let me. <laughs> Every thread is dangling around that corner. There we go. And you're always sewing from your dominant hand to your non-dominant hand, right? So it doesn't matter if you're left-handed. If you're left-handed, you would be holding this exactly the opposite. It would be like a mirror image and you'd be working from this side out. So basically you're working on straight lines. You're not putting curved pieces together or anything like that. So this is, I kind of liked how this turned out. You know, I've got a big space for yellow to go in the center when I applique this on to something or and English paper piecing too. This, um, if you decided to do like a few rings and then interlock them, okay, this would be, this would kind of be fun too. You know, a little different block or whatever going on. But we just decided to do the one. But if you did three, you could interlock all three of them. You know, just by getting everybody to this point and then sewing them down in place, right? That, I thought that would have been fun, but I thought, no, I'm not going to have you guys sit here and watch me sew for, hand sew for like an hour and a half, right? So, 
you know, but anyways. So now we're just about at the end here. And I'm going to make three uh, right at the very tip so my joints stay nice and tight. And just three. Now I'm going to travel this thread across, just up and across. So I come out the other side. And now I'm going to put these sides together. And I'm going to line them up. Now, I I see all these people using these uh, these wonder clips or whatever. When I'm doing this, when I'm doing a big project or whatever, I just use wonder uh, binder little binder clips, and I find that they work great. You know, they're not they're inexpensive. You can pick them up at any Safeway or not Safeway, but uh, stationery supply store. Again, we do the three. And, and then we just hop along here. Let me see if I can't get this a little closer to see, so you can see what I'm doing. It's hard finding the right cam camera angle while we're doing this. And because you're moving so much, right? I mean, it's hard for the camera to focus, I suppose. Yeah, oops, don't sew the skin in, that would be bad. There. And all you're doing is catching fabric. That's it. Like when you're doing hexes, you've got a bunch of Y seams you gotta work with. Well, hexes and Y seams when you're doing this, Y seams are nothing. And actually this is what I would consider a beginner uh, EPP because you have no Y seams. All you have is a funny angle, you're sewing to another funny angle and you're off, you're off to the races. But, okay, there. Halfway, more than halfway. More than halfway. I probably did a better job on the other ones, but oh well. You won't see it from the front. Now there's also people use ladder stitches sometimes. They'll go through and do a ladder stitch. And that that's almost that is invisible almost to uh, to the front. But all this was all I used. I didn't have any cardboard stock and I don't have those fancy cutters that people have, those what cricket cutters, I guess they're called. And it just um so I just used freezer paper. Two sheets of freezer paper, shiny side, iron the shine, shiny sides together, and you end up with lovely little uh, pieces now for your, your English paper piecing. The other thing I have for English paper piecing when I'm doing hexes is a punch. And wow, do I love that. That makes some pretty quick, quick little hexes. Okay, we're right at the corner. Now one two, three. Okay, now I open this up and it lies flat. Yes, it does, woohoo! And I turn it over and I make just a couple of hand over knots. You know, like you, you, you twist it like this, right? So this is under, this is under. I don't know, you can't see that, right? Let's see if you can see it better here on the, on the wood. So this is under, under, there. And you just, yeah, just over like that. And you do like three of them. Whenever I do, I do three. Okay, now, what I do is I slip this in, because I don't want my thread hanging too close to the edge. I just go down a couple stitches and I knot it again, because then I don't have my thread hanging out at the edge of my, my stitching. And I just do two hand over knots, and clip it tight, and we get to our ta-da moment. <laughs> Isn't this the cutest little mini you've ever seen in your life? I have a piece of yellow with the bumblebee print that I'm gonna now applique, you know, just hand stitch applique this on to the, the middle of this. And then I'm going to hand stitches down onto um, uh, 
a background. But as you're applicating this down, before you pull any of your papers out that you've uh, em Elmer School glued in, you would get, make sure you have a really good press on this so that you're not getting, you're not going to lose this, this edge, right? And all you needed to do this was good thread, a little needle, and some freezer paper and a pattern. So English paper piecing, this is probably the easiest one you're going to do because it's all straight lines, right? Like hexes are harder than this, right? This looks overwhelming because there's so many of them, but they're so cute. So anyways, we're going to have fun with this. I hope you have a fabulous week ahead. I, we have just enjoyed how our comments that we're getting in our Facebook group and all the comments that you're leaving on YouTube are just wonderful. Thank you so much for commenting. Uh, it helps push our videos ahead if you comment, even if all you do is give us a, you know, a, a quick thanks or a thumbs up or something that, that helps us out a lot. So you have a fabulous week. Take care. Bye. My husband and I would like to thank you for watching today. We're so happy about the way our channel has grown and we just want to wish you so well in your journey along with us. Please like, share and subscribe and tell your friends. Now, the next thing is this quilt. We are wondering if you guys would like this quilt as a free sew along on this channel this fall, this coming fall, winter. We were kind of thinking that this one would be really fun to do. We could do it in a larger size or a smaller size, it's up to you, but this one was a lot of fun to make. And it's all, it, it lends itself to being hand stitched, but you can also do this on a sewing machine as well. So let us know in the comments below. Remember, share, like, subscribe, tell your friends. Okay, have a great week ahead, bye.